Hey everybody, we've got a long one today. We're going to be talking about all the games that are going to be coming out up through the end of the weekend for July 4th. Keeping in mind that a lot of people are going to be out doing other stuff. And for whatever reason, people still decided to put their games out and have it end right at the critical time when the 50% of their buying market will be out of town. So, just so you are aware of all those campaigns, I rushed one out and uh, there shouldn't be anything else that's coming up that will end at that time and this only goes until the end of Sunday right on Monday then uh, that'll be for the next video of everything in there uh, sometimes I split up the tabletop RPGs with the uh, card and board games and other stuff this time everything's gonna be kind of lumped together and that's gonna make it a long video I know some people don't like the long videos but that's what the links in the description are for you can click on and you can jump to the things that you are interested in if anything looks good uh, you can just keep going on with that let's get started first one for us to look at is pirates of pugmire this is a tabletop rpg by the well, creative designer from white wolf uh, that's the guy who did a lot of the art design and direction for uh, vampire werewolf all that kind of stuff so who's this going to be for well it's not just pugs it's cats dogs all kinds of stuff um if you're the type of person that baby talks to your animal and still wants to RPG and then wants to set your little dog on their lap and do pew pew pow pow noises while moving their uh, paws back and forth, uh, annoying your entire table and everyone involved with you, that's who this is for. Uh, for some reason, people really, really love their pets to the point of insanity and uh, want to anthropomorphize them even further. So if you at one point were... Uh, just jealous of the dogs playing poker uh, famous painting and you wanted to bring that into your role-playing life with swashbuckling and uh, other crazy fantasy tropes this is for you um, I know it's not for July 4th weekend but it was coming out and uh, I threw that in for everything else it does have someone who um, really knows what they're doing in the RPG space at the helm of it and that's kinda why I'm putting it out there and some people are insane about their animals and it's possible if you're like me and you're willing to do a long con on a really really uh, good practical joke then you may put a year in advance effort into uh, pranking one of your friends that's what this would be for last week when we were talking about the uh, Merca adventures uh, said I don't really like to talk about politics but gaming don't like to mix it together these guys did a good job of putting the two they have this game called War for Indigar, came out uh, on Kickstarter a while back, and they're ready to do all of their fulfillment, which is great. More power to them for getting it together. Unfortunately, they're a small studio, and like many other small studios, they can't afford the new tariffs. So what they're doing is launching a 10-day campaign for other people to go and buy uh, from their existing stock and offer these 60 millimeter monsters for people to pick up that will hopefully offset their costs so that they don't go into the red from trying to do their fulfillment. They didn't want to have to charge people they've already charged shipping for an additional cost, which you got to compliment them for coming up with a creative solution and, and trying something out. You uh, may want to take a look at their campaign just in case this was something that you missed before and uh, you may be interested in. It's going to end fairly quickly, so you're going to want to jump on it. Then we have some terrain from one of the top terrain people out there, Dwarven Forge. They're coming out with Hellscape. And what's cool about it is you can buy the illuminated uh, versions that have LEDs inside of them. Or you can buy the ones that have transparent plastic that allow you to put... Uh, they sell these LED lights that fit underneath the tiles so that it shines up and through so it, it has everything there. Or just regular paint. And uh, they're really, really neat looking. Um, if you have a center of the earth campaign or you're going to the realm of fire or whatever it is that you're going to do with lava, uh, maybe your uh, fantasy group just decides to go to Hawaii. Who knows? Whatever the reason you could have lava stuff for. These are awesome looking. I would recommend not buying them just because they're awesome looking, though. I think you should uh, take a quick look into how they get assembled and uh, the size requirements and table space. A lot of people could get tempted to just blow other money because it looks so darn cool. But make sure you uh, you really have something that uh, or a place where you want to display it. This is the kind of terrain being able to flip it on or off. 
that if you have a shelf that is permanently, uh, you know, a display case, this would be something so cool to, to always have available. And uh, check the scale because you may want to implement the uh, figures or board pieces or whatever from a different game with the, something that looks this neat and uh, keep that on your shelf. Then we have a game that looks a little more like it's going to win on theme rather than gameplay, and that's What's He Building in There? And this is a game where you kind of play a mad doctor, uh, like a 1940s serial movie villain from a sci-fi picture. Um, somebody that an early Batman or Superman would have faced against and coming up with an evil plot. Basically, you're Nikola Tesla. Um, the idea is that you have to create intermediary uh, inventions and you have trade and, and um, you know, uh, generation from factories and different things in order to create your final doomsday device. So it seems pretty neat. I loved Evil Genius, the video game. Uh, I like the theme of being able to play the, the bad guy. Um, it's not something that's necessarily for everyone, but it looks like it's a neat little game that uh, will kill some time. And I do enjoy uh, the theme of being able to reverse it so you're not always the good guy and you can do the <laughs> laugh if you're uh, going to play it with your kids. Then sticking with the science theme, we have Trouble in Temple Town. This is by the same people that made the uh, Moonshiners of the Apocalypse, so it's got a lot of that humor involved with it. The cool thing about this is you are playing a team, kind of like the Ghostbusters, inside the body of a person who's sick, and your job is to run around and defeat bacteria and viruses and other terrible, terrible things in order to help the person out. So you get a little bit of a education, um, like one of the characters' name is Leukocyte, and that's a thing that, you know, white blood cell type uh, thing that runs around and uh, blows up the baddies. So uh, I think it's a great thing to play with the kids. Uh, ages 12, it suggests, but I think you could go younger. You can uh, explain a few things of uh, how the body works with the kids, and, uh, you know, just I think it'll help them for in the future. So uh, if you were intrigued by uh, Moonshiners of the Apocalypse, you like the art style, as you can see, the, uh, the almost the, the Moonshiner hat that the uh, little... Uh, virus or bacteria, whatever amoeba-like thing is in the center that they're fighting against. Um, it seems to carry on that same aesthetic. They have a neat uh, video that goes along with it, fully animated, um, that you don't see in a lot of different uh, campaigns that uh, is kind of fun to watch. So you're making the human body into Ghostbusters-style superheroes fighting the uh, villains that could be lurking inside you. I just love the idea, the theme, and everything like that. And it can be played solo, so definitely take a quick look. Shifting science gears over to space, we've got uh, something that was requested by one of the viewers and was already in the queue, so I had to throw that in there, and that's After Nova. This game, minimum three players, so keep that in mind, and you are playing these anthropomorphized animals that are mining resources out in space, and you're trading back and forth, and it comes in a tiny box, and it takes a small footprint. So those are cool things that a lot of people will be out there looking for. Does the theme of the animals fit the uh, story, the narrative, the gameplay in any way? Not really. <laughs> um, from the look of it, uh, it, it could be any kind of alien or whatever. But you know, you can pick your favorite and uh, maybe get your kids involved with that, um, or bring people in that don't normally play a, a board game or card game. They just like to look at different animals. Uh, there's a dog in the first one, so maybe if you're going to play that Pugmire uh, game or you needed a rabbit or a walrus or whatever other crazy business that people have as favorite animals, then uh, you can get the full three people that you need to play. Didn't see anything for fewer players than that. It is very cheap, so if you're just looking for something that uh, you can play for next spring, this one is supposed to come out, March 2020, so spring break, uh, maybe then it'll be a good idea to, uh, to invest here. Uh, they are well, well funded. So, uh, there's no real crucial thing. If you wanted to wait on this, you could probably get a hold of them in, uh, in the pre-order phase. Now we're into something that's not so much science, but war. And that is Bellum of Mutants and Men. This is another game that has mechanics that the theme, the theme are independent of each other. Mechanics and theme don't really have to match up. It uses... The strategies of chess to have a war between two factions. It's all in black and white, which 
may make it hard to see what's going on on the table. Um, I really wish they would have changed the color scheme up to have some color so that you could tell the difference between the cards. But hey, that's what they prefer. Much like chess, you need two players. It doesn't seem to go any more or less than that. But it is very innovative and different. I like the idea that they're using something like chess that is old and very familiar to people to uh, to create a new different type of war game. I used to love playing battle chess on the uh, five and a quarter floppy systems way, way, way back in the uh, previous millennium. And uh, this would be pretty similar to that. Uh, the decks are constructed um, already for you. You don't have to worry about anything. They're ready to be balanced. And from then on, you just uh, to go to war. So that looks pretty cool. But again, like I said, I'd love a splash of color. Wouldn't stop you from coloring them in yourself, though. I guess you can do, like, fill in the lines type of deal. Then if you uh, didn't get too much dice from too many bones before, then you have Elder Die by Cat Dragon Games. These guys, it's a push-your-luck game where you're matching symbols together. Uh, it's not necessarily for me, but some people collect the dice. I uh, want to remind you that just because you see it there in the, uh, the graphic doesn't mean that those are the final shapes or sizes. They say they're going to be... Uh, redoing them to make them look even prettier. So that part is up to you. If you back this, it is a cheap game and it gives you the opportunity to pick up any of the other Cat Dragon games that have come out previously. So it's a good time to jump on things at hopefully a lower price if uh, that's something that you've been interested in. I'm not much for just rolling dice. I like uh, uh, something a little more beefy to go from, um, a little more strategy involved. But this may be great if you're on a work uh, break or something and you just want a really simple uh, uh, low footprint game to to have available for you. Then the opposite of small footprint we have the Jurassic World miniatures game. This is a skirmish game where you play the people against the dinosaurs. So one person will take a, one faction and the other one will take the other faction. I was not so impressed by it. <laughs> um, I really wanted to play dinosaurs versus dinosaurs i didn't want I, I don't know why i thought when i saw jurassic world that it would be something uh a little more expansive i was really underwhelmed by the uh the inclusion of the humans and how the humans uh will handle everything um i thought maybe it would be more like jurassic park one where you would have more map in manipulation and trying to break out of certain zones first and then, you know, grab other things. I don't know what I was expecting. I just, I, I just didn't like this game uh, when I took a quick look at it. If there is something that you see that would make this game awesome, please put it in the comments. I just haven't found it myself. Uh, same as the Planet of the Apes game from before. I was super excited when I first saw it and when I heard about it and then increasingly underwhelmed the more I looked into it and, and thought about it as a, as a play experience. So if you have a good um, reason why to pick it up, definitely put it in the comments because I'm, I'm missing something here. Then we have something that is going to require a very clean table, and that is Dungeon Drop. And this has a, I don't want to say procedurally generated, uh, but it's kind of like Diablo, I guess, with a bunch of cubes in the sense that the map is different every time you go into it. As you drop these cubes on your table, and hopefully you have a felt line table so they don't go too far. I'd hate you know anyone to suffer the pain of stepping on a Lego uh, to happen from dropping all of the cubes everywhere. If you're going to play with kids, especially little ones, then they're going to get these things all over the place. So keep that in mind. You might want to you know t just temper your enthusiasm uh, based on the the ages of the kids that you want to play this with, or that you are going to offer this game to because it will get everywhere and that's the point you're supposed to set up a square table which you may or may not have and drop all of these cubes in the center of them and where the black cubes go that determines an outline by which the dungeon is created it's very innovative it's very interesting but i just have to caution people from getting too excited if it's not going to fit your living space just just forward think that out if you have uh, a, a group of uh, uh, you know that has a good light well lit space so you can tell the colors apart and nobody's colorblind so they can tell the colors apart 
and uh, and nobody's going to dump this stuff all over your floor, so you have to pick it out of your vacuum cleaner, then uh, then I'd say it's a great game to, to jump in on. Speaking of games where the players being a little older might be helpful, we have Arcaludum. This is an escape room board game that it kind of bridges the gap between when you go to a regular escape room and you're really excited because they have all the props and everything ready to go and it's real immersive, and then you pick up a, an escape room board or card game and it is the cheapest, most awful thing you could possibly pick up. I'm looking at you, Maguire, MacGyver uh, board game. You're terrible. Uh, that is supposed to be bridged with props provided in Arcaludum. You have two different escape rooms that are available. One is for Jack the Ripper and the other one's for a quarantine area. Keeping in mind that this requires you to have a game master. So it's not like you can jump in and play this game along with everybody else. You are facilitating the game for other people. If you are not going to have fun with that, don't get it. But if you're going to have fun with it and you're going to go get some props and other people are going to join in and uh, it's going to be a little bit more like uh, murder mystery night where you'd all dress up and, and get involved, that's who this is going to be the most fun for. Uh, it includes masks, crime scene kits, all kinds of cool stuff. And uh, and I really like the that they're, they're pushing that. They're maxing out at six players. That can be difficult because that's only three couples. Um but I like the idea that they're going to create a better experience for the home escape room people. If those notes to think about are not for you, then, hey, maybe Homes Horror Hotel, because it goes to 10 players, minimum of four, and it uh, is a social deduction game that does not have a storyteller. So there's only one bad guy, which means that you don't have, hopefully, as much downtime and you are going to go through and try to figure out who is the psychopath in the group. Uh, who is H.H. H. Holmes, America's most famous first serial killer, just because the documentation involved. He has possibly killed over 250 men and women. Um, he did. His, he's most notable because he had all these insurance scams. Basically, the guy got off on being able to cheat people and get away with it. He used a bunch of fake names and identities. He married multiple women at the same time, trying to get dowries, trying to kill them for the for life insurance scams that were run on there. Um, I'm not big on, uh, you know, promoting <laughs> these terrible people uh, and the things that they did, but it could be the thing that makes your group happy, and that's why I'll put it in here. Uh, if you want to know more about Holmes, a great book about how Chicago works out at the time is Devil in the White City. Leonardo DiCaprio's had it as an option for a long time to put into a movie. But the most exciting part of that is uh, Burnham, who is the guy trying to make the, the uh, Columbia World Fair 1892 in Chicago at the same time as Holmes is doing his dastardly deeds. Uh, if you go out there and you read the uh, Holmes books in his own words, this, that, the other thing. They're terrible. They're terrible. Devil in the White City, much better narrative. It might make this game more fun for everybody. Delving back into politics, but for a good cause, we have Citizen the Game. This is mainly going to be for people in the United States. It's a two to four person game with the actual pictures, faces, and names of current and historical political figures. So what does this mean? It means that if you were the type of person that listened to Schoolhouse Rock and the I'm Only a Bill, then you wanted to go a little further and see a little bit more about how a bill gets pushed through Congress, and you wanted to make it a competitive stakes game, that's what Citizen is about. People don't know a lot about civics anymore because it's not very well taught. And the unfortunate part, because you're using real people with real agendas, that it may in the future make this game not as much fun. Like I have a trivia game from the 70s and all of the question answers are about Sonny and Cher. You kind of get that same feeling when you're playing with new people. It's going to happen where uh, this game Citizen is going to date itself at a certain point. But what is important is not only are these going to make it a lot easier on Jeopardy when you figure out who all these people are and remember who they are, that uh, it gives a deeper understanding of the process. And while it does have a political theme, it is basically apolitical. You can be from any party and it doesn't matter. These are just 
cards. They're just names on cards. And uh, because these are public figures and they can take from their portraits, you know, public domain, and they were able to put the stuff on there, it will show you the process. And it doesn't matter who you vote for one way or another. It is just about the process. If you are a government class or um, you just want people to know a little bit more <laughs> about the, the things that they're uh, talking about or voting on, then uh, you could encourage them to be competitive by playing this game. It's coming out in 2020. You might be sick of politics by the end of next year. But then again, maybe you're engaged. Maybe you're you're ready to jump in and see what everything's all about and why we can't have the things that you want in the country. Uh, this could be for you. If you are not from America, you might find the uh, the cluster F that is our, our political system <laughs> uh, interesting. I know a lot of people from Canada and England and other places, Australia. They, on every poll and every test, seem to know way more about uh, the United States political system than uh, we do here in the U.S. So uh, maybe it's for everybody. And it was kind of a, a sleeper when I was going through everything. I was like, ah, who's going to want this? It actually looks like it could be a fun game. And uh, very, very interesting. I love to learn, and I especially love to learn while playing a game. Then we have a game that has content just as equally divisive as politics, and that is Dig Your Way Out, which is about escaping from prison. You have to buy things with cigarettes and build shivs and uh, attack each other, and it's a competitive, fast-paced game with a lot of neat art. Uh, it's coming out of France. I don't know what the prison system's like in France. I watched A Prophet, which is a cool movie about it. Um, and uh, I, I don't know. In the U.S., the cigarette thing may make it very difficult to sell on, at a retail uh, price, especially to kids, because you cannot sell anything cigarette-related or like anything with like Joe Camel or anything like that on it. Um, so just keep that part in mind. Maybe you would change this up instead of being about cigarettes to, to some other type of contraband um, if you uh, wanted to keep your kids away from that kind of thing. Uh, it is interesting, though, that they're trying to break out. It feels like it's uh, a little like the uh, second to last season of uh, Orange is the New Black. Um, it, it appears to be a mixed gender uh, prison, though. If I'm looking at the... Uh, the hairstyle's correct. I'm just assuming that there's some uh, male and female characters in here. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think it could be a fun game night. Uh, we talked about other games where people could theme the night. And uh, prison jumpsuits, uh, when I made Pretty Dead, we had some prison stuff in there. Pretty Dead is a movie that I made. Um, it was only like eight, ten dollars for orange uh, jumpsuits. The we went to a scrubs place and we picked up the orange outfits, and they even had little orange shoes for eight, ten bucks. That was pretty neat. Um, have a blast with it. Why not? I mean, it doesn't seem to to have much else going on uh, that could uh, trigger you into whatever's going on in 2020. Uh, it could be fun. Just uh, just check the. Uh, the, the company that you're going to want to play with and see if they have a uh, sense of humor about this kind of thing. But I think it would be fun. Then we'll look at another game that's about nothing controversial. Religion, right? Pope or Nope. This is from a company that brought you Serpents, which was another card game. The, uh, the coolest thing I think about it is the hat that you get to wear if uh, you become Pope and it'll fit in the box. Unlike Imploding Kittens, where you have to bring this big uh, extra piece if you're going to do the uh, funnel of shame or cone of shame or uh, other similar types of competitive games that have uh, things for you to wear. This fits in the box, which is great. You have these little coaster pieces and everything. The artwork looks really cool. Um, it, it's not uh, too intense or crazy. It, you do good deeds or bad deeds, and that's how you struggle your way to becoming the Pope. If uh, you watch the Borgias, or played Assassin's Creed 2, then uh, you might have some interest in uh, the uh, the backward dealings that go on with becoming Pope. Or you read Angels and Demons. Lots of people read Angels and Demons. Second Dan Brown book about Robert Langman. Lots of good reasons why people would jump in. I think humor-wise, if your crowd would have enjoyed Secret Hitler, I think they'd be okay with this. If not, and they have no sense of humor, why are you playing games with them? They're awful people. And uh, you might want to pick something else. But I think if you have a good set of humor, 
uh, and there's no enemies of fun in your group, then uh, you can uh, easily find some some uh, some good times to be had here, especially around beers and uh, possibly wine. Then we have a learning game that I think is going to make it into the Hall of Fame for innovation. It is pretty awesome, MojoBot. You can program using tiles and tokens and different things along the board into this little light up robot that will then move around the board and do the things that you wanted it to do. You're given missions for it to follow and the idea is that you will learn a little bit about math and algorithms and how to code a little tiny basic bit. As you can see in the graphics, the kids in here are small, right? They look like maybe they're like five. Uh, it's hard to tell because, you know, kids are, they're all tiny and who knows. But uh, it's pretty amazing that they're all able to jump in on it. I think you'll need to sit there and help them. But if you're uh, looking for something to do with the kid and you just just want to tune out and and uh, and <laughs> not have to think up a new story or whatever that's going on, this would make a fun game. Uh, they don't look like they're going to have too small a parts to choke on but I would keep that part in mind. They say they're gonna ship in September, which means the second this thing is over, they're gonna send a boat over here with, or to your area from Hong Kong and, uh, and drop off the toys. I don't know how sturdy the uh, system is. So you wanna have uh, a light touch maybe, make sure you don't get spill anything on the little robot. But I think this is a pretty amazing little toy that I used to, play with uh, the logo on the Apple II, uh, which was the green screen, the black and, and green type you put the five and a quarter floppies into. A lot of people had them in the early computer labs, and uh, you learned a little bit about programming uh, from that, just making the little guy move around and draw stuff for you. Seems to be like that. Uh, instead of sitting in front of a keyboard, though, you're sitting in front of this board. I think it will be a lot of fun for you to watch your kids have fun playing with it. Then when they get a little older and you want to blow them up, that's Shaolia. This game's out of Korea. And when I lived in Korea, I'll tell you, there is nothing to do but drink. And I'm a little surprised that they even came up with a game. It's pretty neat. I'm not surprised, though, that it kind of plays like a video game, which is what they're famous for. NCSoft and other companies uh, in the video game space, uh, very big on MMOs coming out of Korea. I think that it will be interesting and fun for early teens um, it's a little cutesy if you're interested in uh, the apps that have been coming out and playing them on your tablet and you like that art style, then this is perfect for you. Um, it's It allows you to have different powers from different factions and you blow up other people on the board. Looks like it's got a small footprint. So all of that stuff looks pretty cool. Uh, I just think it's, uh, it's, it's an interesting little game and I'm just glad to see that someone in Korea is doing something to have fun because there was nothing, nothing to do in Korea. There was the taco place in Gangnam, which is called Dos Tacos, where you could actually get yourself some avocados on a shrimp burrito, which was magic when you're stuck there and, uh, nothing else. That was it. Get drunk. So I'm glad they're doing some games. Take a quick look. Why not? And yes, as a quick side note. The real Gangnam style is when all the foreigners on Saturday go to Dos Tacos. You get on the bus, you go down there, you get off, it's right at the bookstore, you walk in there, you get the heaven that is Mexican food, because the guy is from LA and he has an idea of what it should really taste like. Oh, it was perfect. You didn't see Dos Tacos once in that video, did you? No. Those things weren't even shot in Gangnam. Most of them probably shot in Aquajong, which had nothing to do with it. It's terrible. Terrible. That's enough unexpected ranting. So we have Six Gun Showdown by Redwall Games. Have you ever wanted to play Cash and Guns, but you didn't want to get up and move? Well, I think that's what this is for. You have different cards, you throw them down, and you have basically a quick shootout between two players. It plays super quick. Basically, you're just looking at your hand and going back and forth. Um, maybe for other people, love letters enough, or you know, just competitive two-player games. Uh, you might have something already going on. I'd get this mainly if you want something to to be part of the Western theme and you have kids that you're not too worried about the shootout part, they're not going to fight, um, I think it'd be easy for them to pick up and play on their own. So if you have a couple of, of kids, two, not three, not anyone who's going to be excluded, 
then uh, this might be the, the showdown uh, fun for you. Then we have a game that I'm including just because the title makes me laugh because it makes me think it's Wizard Sleeves rather than Wizard Thieves. This is a game that uh, you have very competitive running back and forth, different cards, plays in just a few minutes. As you can see, there's a bunch of uh, different things you can do in the, in the graphic that uh, you manipulate the hands and the other stuff people are putting down and you slap them down real fast and you try to take it before the other players. Not necessarily for little kids because if they get super competitive and start hitting each other, uh, you know, just my experience in dealing with my brother, uh, that's what would have happened. But uh, if you have adults, as is shown in the graphic, I think you'd uh, have a good time, fast paced, throw a few beers into it and have a really good time. Then we have a social deduction game for five to eight players. This is probably mainly for adult groups because you're going to have some backstabbing. You're going to run around and you're going to get uh, different um, objects to help you do the heist. It's possible that during the getaway, you will be against the group or maybe you're part of the crew. Uh, everybody gets a different, uh, different role uh, and you have to kind of figure things out as you move through. I think it's neat. It's, uh, it's a different theme, and uh, I, there was a bank heist-themed escape room that we were going to do out in Hollywood and just never made it out to. Uh, so that's what kind of piqued my interest is, oh man, I never made it out to that one, but maybe this will be fun. And who didn't watch uh, Ocean's Eleven and think that, oh man, it'd be so much fun to plan a heist with friends, right? Then if that's not what you want, we can jump back into the RPG space with Children of the Beast. This is a different kind of D20 system. Um, they're calling it XD20, and it comes with an optional companion app to run things from, as you can see on the phones. On the left, you can see there is a type of corruption going on inside of different creatures. And on the right, you can see that they've been corrupted and they're falling apart and whatever, and you're hunting down the sources of the corruption in this world that is a little bit like Mortal Engines, in that you have hills that are moving around just like the cities were, but instead of them being machines, they're creatures. So you have all kinds of different, um, a completely different world than what you'd expect. Uh, instead of it just being like a one-off adventure, or, oh, suddenly you ran into a Tarrasque or whatever the case is. Now it's the whole world is strange and unique and different. And I think that's a, it's a neat thing to explore. It can be kind of hard for new players to get a grip on. But if you have a very um, interactive and very ready to go um, do something different and, and be inventive type of group, this would be perfect for them. Not quite fantasy. Um, it's because it's not uh, necessarily just elves and dwarves and things like that. It's a completely different kind of story. It's not necessarily going to jump in the same way that anime would or anything else. It's its own thing. If you want something inventive, if you want something different, if you want something unique, take a look at their Kickstarter. Click on the link in the description. Children of the Beast. Slipping into that same kind of theme, we have the Veil, Rulers of Darkness expansion. If you wanted to jump in on the Veil, if you haven't played it before, then here's your chance. They're saying that they're going to deliver by Halloween. So if you want something that is dark fantasy themed by Halloween to jump in on that, hey, here you go. Something perfect. Uh, I never played the original game, um, but it is a solo game and it has dark, crazy imagery in it, which I enjoy that kind of thing. I like Kingdom Death and other stuff. So uh, it's getting usually top 10 games, top 10 deck builders, 8.6 on Board Game Geek, all that crazy stuff that says on their, uh, their website. So... If you're into deck builders, if you're into that dark fantasy theme, and you haven't played the Veil before, you got a good shot. If you wanted to add 20 new classes to your current game of the Veil, hey, here you go too. For me, I'm still sticking with the uh, Arkham Horror Living Card game. Um, but I made a big themed library card theme for my uh, Living Card game, the Arkham Horror stuff. You can see it on the Instagram. For the type of people that are out there that like to have themed stuff to play along with, that's what healer's dice are for. As far as dice, I don't know how well they roll. They're rectangular, they're not necessarily going to go through your dice towers the same way. But if you were trying to run uh, a healer and you wanted to do something more than just sit there um, and wait for somebody to get hurt for you to heal them and be part of the party, 
Healer's Dice makes you feel like you're a little more involved. Now, the uh, hearts and things that are on there look a little bit like Zelda. Uh, I believe that's intentional. They've got the Caduceus so that uh, it looks like, you know, a, a real he healer thing. I don't think that they will ever land on their sides. So these are D4s. You're going to have to figure out the math on your own um, about whether or not they're going to add up the same way. Um, but I think it's a, it's, it's a neat little deal if you're board game or if you're, um, I mean, maybe Pandemic would play really well with it if Pandemic ever used dice. There's all kinds of uh, Clinic and other games that are out there that might work pretty well if you just want to add a little bit more theming to your dice rolling. And speaking of theme, we have a game that didn't quite pick one. That's Anno Urbis, The Fight for Rome. Two to four players will use... Uh, the map to fight for territory, being one of the uh, famous families, and at some point they're going to move to a different board and fight gladiator style. So it's cool that it has different aspects, but I think it may be biting off a little more than it can chew. Uh, if you want a complete Roman experience type of game that you have a lot of time to play... <laughs> Uh, and explain more and more rules to. This is something that you may uh, be interested in. It's coming out of Rome, Italy. That's where uh, Fengi Games is located. I'm hoping that it will have a lot more historical accuracy because it's from the area. They talk a little about the hills and um, you know the different territories and areas and the peoples and uh, it's trying to bring in some historical accuracy into the game. There's a lot of other games in the same space. I think that if you were interested in any of those and maybe you've passed on one before, maybe you should check, take a look at this one in case it has something extra that you were looking for in those previous games that you passed on. If not, um, it's got minis. If you're looking for some, uh, some gladiator, uh, gladiator minis, maybe it's something you jump on. Then we'll go ahead and jump back into sci-fi with two robots. This is a game about creating a robot. Surprise, surprise. You're going to take parts, you're going to run through the junk pile, you're going to build a factory, those factories are going to come out with other parts, and at the end of the day, you're eventually going to have a robot to fight against the other players. You're supposed to eliminate players as you go through. Uh, I don't really like that mechanic necessarily, because then what do you do after you're eliminated? Is that time you go to get pee? Like, I don't know what you're going to do. Sometimes I'd play games just to get eliminated when I was bored, just so I could go off and do something else. So maybe... Uh, I'm hoping you're not going to get bored by this one. It has a lot of different factions, a lot of unique stuff. So the Peacemaker, you can see he's doing some meditation. I don't know why you... Maybe that's what happens when you unplug the robot. They meditate. Who knows? Um, and then the Samurai and Apocalypse and all kinds of crazy stuff and Scavenger. So you get different abilities. Each one can do different things. Two to four players. And if you feel like jumping in on this, go ahead. The art looks pretty neat. It is very, very colorful. Um and more, I think, skewed for a younger audience. They uh, they suggest 10 and up. I'd say that's a good amount, because you're going to have to be able to do some strategy. And uh, I think uh, beating your kids at this and having them beat you at this would uh, be a very interesting thing if they are robot-inclined. Maybe you got that, uh, that mojo uh, robot from before, and you moved up, and you want to uh, play with the older kids. Possible. And finally, we're going to have Sovereign Skies. This is a Euro-style game with a bunch of little rocket minis and other stuff. Um, you play unique factions, and you race to take over the skies, take over space, pretty much as you would do with anything else. This one's neat in the sense that you do not need a second player. It is uh, solo capable, so you can run in and play it. It has lots of different types of factions. As you can see in there, there's somebody that looks a little bit like a Mind Flayer. Um, there's a, like a were beast looking thing. They have a bunch of different interesting art uh, stuff. What does that mean gameplay-wise? Well, it probably plays very similar to other Euro-style games that you have. If you're looking for a new theme or you're bored with something you had before, this may be something to replace it. Uh, they're struggling a little bit, but they've got plenty of time to go. The ships look pretty neat. I do like that. Um, I might use them for other games, uh, depending on uh, on how well this one goes. Maybe I'll use 
other games for this one. Who knows? So that's going to be everything. Just keep in mind this episode was specifically arranged so that you wouldn't miss anything while you're out on vacation for the 4th of July weekend. Next time I might split things into tabletop and, uh, board games and, and tabletop RPGs again, just in, uh, considering how much stuff is out there. Next time is going to be a lot more 3D printable stuff. Um, I see a lot of UV resin printers out there. I'm going to continue to warn people they are goopy, stinky messes. Do not get them. Um, but uh, yeah, I hope you have a happy 4th of July, even if you're not in the United States and celebrating our independence. I hope you just have a regular good old Thursday, if that's the case for you. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, feel free to let me know. I hope you had a happy Father's Day if you are in the United States, because that was this weekend. And uh, if you want to tell anybody else about any games, there was only one game I left off because the campaign was so small. I don't think they're going to fund, and they need to kind of reinvent themselves into something that uh, will be a little better. They're a small, small game, and I think they need to do some major adjustments uh, on their... Uh, their idea of what their product should be. Uh, but other than that, if you like a game and you want some other people to know about it, feel free to, to throw it in the comments. You can also put other stuff, what you got going on in your life. It's fine by me. You can put any criticisms or other things in the comments. That's fine too. You can uh, help the channel out by sharing it with people if you think that they want to know more about games uh, or if you just want to tell them about a, a game that uh, you think you want to buy because you can just send them the link that goes directly to the time that's on the uh, descriptions. So I try to be as helpful as possible to you guys. Feel free to use all that stuff to whatever end you uh, prefer. And that's going to be it for this week. I'll be around next week, and we'll go from there. Have a good one.